You're on a path in the wood. That didn't work. We're going in with a plan this time. We're not getting stuck in another loop, just acting on instinct. We're stuck in a big enough loop as it is. Instinct was keeping us alive. Until it wasn't. So what are we supposed to do? Great, so you've been here before. That doesn't bode well. You're not supposed to have been here before. This is supposed to be one and done. So you know more than you're letting on. Yeah, what he said. Of course I do, but believe me, it's in your best interests. The more you know about the princess, the more difficult your task will be. And why is that? Having me explain why would defeat the whole purpose. There are simply some things I'm not allowed to tell you. It's a hard rule. Whose rule is it? Who's telling you to boss us around? We've died twice already, and if you want us to stay alive this time, it's in your best interests to give us an edge. It's my rule, and this conversation is over. You're right. This is different, isn't it? I'm starting to lose track of things myself. Ground is ground. It doesn't matter what shape it takes. We'll adapt. If it looks different, that's because the situation has started to spiral out of everyone's control. So please, disavow yourself of the notion that you can just come back here and fix this place if you manage to make a mess before that line of thinking leaves you yet another world in ruin. Though, as evidenced by you dying twice, it's safe to assume the fates of the worlds you've left behind don't concern you very much. Consider this your last opportunity to make things right. For you, and for the rest of existence. But especially for you. Clearly we're not getting anything out of him. She spent as much time as she could in the shadows. So we're gonna draw her out. But she's fast. And she's clever. We're clever too. So this time we're not going to let her cut off our escape. We're going to lead her to the stairs ourselves. It'll be a lot easier to deal with her once we can actually see what she is. But you already know what she is. She's a princess. Yeah, right. A princess we couldn't see. And one that had big, sharp teeth, too. How about you stick to describing things and we'll stick to doing our job? Sharp teeth? You make your way down to the cabin. Your fated confrontation awaits. You know what to do. All right, we've been over the plan. Go to her out of the shadows, make her show herself. And what if she doesn't want to be seen? We'll figure out a way to make it happen. And if that doesn't make her any easier to fight? It will. It's always easier to fight what you can see, no matter how big or toothy she might be. The interior is dark and overgrown. Vines and brush obscure so much of the place that, had you not seen the exterior, you might not have noticed this was a cabin at all. The only furniture of note, if you could call it that, is a knotted stump, a pristine blade embedded in its exposed rings. The blade is your implement. You'll need it if you're going to do this right. Of course that damn mirror's back, and of course he's not saying anything about it. Why is it following us? What are you talking about? There is no mirror. It's just the stump and a narrow tunnel that leads to the basement. He isn't tricking us. Can you feel the wind? It's telling us there's a hole in that wall. Our eyes deceive us. Then either way, we need to investigate. Might as well get started. Yes, take the steel claw. You pull the blade from the stump, gripping it tight. It would be difficult to slay the princess and save the world without a weapon. Odds are we'll need it. Thanks for not putting us in a bad spot. You step forward, approaching the small hole that leads to the basement, hesitating before you enter the princess's lair. 
Haven't you been paying attention? We're not hesitating. This supposed hole is blocked by that old mirror. That mirror isn't part of this place. It's seeped through from somewhere else. It, if there even is an it, is a hallucination. Like you said, you've been here twice before. Your mind was bound to start playing tricks on you eventually. It went away after we reached out to it last time. Might as well try wiping it clean again. What's the arm? You reach forward and wave your hand over the open hole leading to the basement. See? Nothing. Tricks of the eye. No one sense can be trusted on its own. You step forward into the darkness. If there were once stairs leading into the basement, there is nothing left to attest to their existence now. There is only a long tunnel of packed earth, growing more narrow as you descend. It smells of mould and decay. The damp walls leave streaks of dirt along your body as you're forced to hunch, then finally squat down on all fours in order to continue. If the princess lives here, slaying her is probably doing her a favour. As you crawl forward on hands and knees, you're met only with the sounds of ambient earth. No voice slinks confidently up the stairs, no entity threatens violence or pleads for safety. Stay quiet. Don't give her a sound. You say nothing, maintaining the silence as you carefully make your way down into the basement. The basement is dark and cavernous, a gaping maw threatening to swallow you whole. There is no light here, save for what little starlight has managed to filter down the tunnel. And though you can't see the vastness of the space, you can feel it. You're exposed. Stay on your toes. We take a step into the shadows, and as soon as she moves, we jump back, make her follow. From there, we trap her in the tunnel, draw her out of the cabin, whatever it takes to get her out of her element. Then we're safe. You step into the shadows and are enveloped in total darkness. Your heart pounds in your chest, Ears pricked, eyes wide despite the inky blackness, waiting for any sign of movement. That's right. Keep steady. Don't let your nerves get the better of you. There. She's about to strike. With the near silence of a determined predator, the princess erupts from the shadows. But you've already started your swift escape. That's stage one. Now stay focused. You dive into the tunnel and begin scrambling up towards the cabin. You hear her behind you, claws raking at the dirt, chains rattling, breaths hot and heavy with the effort of the ascent. But the sounds are coming slower now, the breaths pained and stuttering. You no longer sense frantic motion behind you in the tunnel. You risk a glance. She is a broad and sickly creature. Her withered and emaciated flesh clinging to bones too large to fit in the narrow space. She managed to squirm her way into the tunnel in pursuit, but now she's stuck, incapable of either moving towards you or returning to the open darkness of the basement below. So that's what she's become. She wasn't like this when we started. Was she? No, she wasn't. Looking at her makes me feel sad. Yeah. Now that we can see her, she doesn't feel like much of a threat at all. Her eyes look up at yours. Wide. Pleading. Come back, you can imagine them saying. Don't leave me here. But you shouldn't listen to the sad eyes of a vanquished enemy. She wants nothing more than to change places with you. If you want us to ignore her, then why would you tell us any of that wide, pleasing eyes begging for mercy business to begin with? All it does is make us feel conflicted. I'm merely describing things as they are. It's not my fault that her eyes had something to say, even if that something was a ploy, which, if I might stress, I pointed out to you. What should we do about her anyway? 
can she still end the world like this? She hurts. We should help. We did bring the blade. Maybe we should use it. Splendid idea. You have a job to finish, and this is the perfect opportunity to finish it. Or maybe we should try and talk to her. That's a terrible idea. Your first one was better. Tighten your grip around the blade and cautiously approach the princess. She eyes you with the silent resignation of someone or something that has long accepted its death. You lift the weapon over your head, preparing a lethal blow. Just one strike and the entire world will owe you a debt of gratitude. She's gone. Where did she go? Should we try and find her? And there's that mirror again. Why is it here? Why now? But it feels so bad. Like looking into it right now is going to be the end of everything. That thing reeks of death. You're right. Part of me wants the truth, but something stronger is holding me back. Fear. I don't like that silence. There's a world beyond the endless walls of the long quiet. I am curious to see what it means for us to know it. It doesn't matter if there are. People are frail and impermanent. You and I are the only things that interest me. No, their minds are empty, existent, but constantly shifting into something new. Do you think your narrator lives in the spaces beyond? Look to one who fears me for your truth. The only answers worth knowing are those we can find within ourselves.
We are real. Nothing is an idea that dwells in the absence of something, but nothing cannot exist on its own, and because of that, nothing can't exist. No, the point of awakening is to find out. The next time I see you, each of us will finally know what we are. I will be here, waiting for you.